previously on the Blockbuster Busters Halloween Havoc. I have seen the face of evil, and its name is Twilight. We need to help him. We promise to never interfere. To hell with it, the kid needs us. The Trinity of Sonders. Erod, it's time to stand. It's time to fight. And give evil hell. You have guts, kid. This movie only has two things, Jack and shit. It looks like Jack left town. I think we just woke the baby. Go easy on them, Erod. Those dead guys. They're so fragile. Hail to the king, baby. In a world of uncertainty, where movie theaters are plagued by remakes and sequels. In a world where big budget movies can still suck. In this world, we have the Blockbuster Buster. Greetings fanboys and fangirls, zombies and sirens, I'm Erod and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. The werewolf is one of the oldest mythological monsters, drawing its origins from numerous cultures including Greek and Native American. But general audiences didn't get their first glimpse of this mythological beast until 1935's Werewolf of London. But oddly enough, the monster didn't reach cult status until it was portrayed by Long Shaney Jr. in the Universal Monster movie classic The Wolfman. Well, I guess now that Stephanie Mayer's done raping vampires, it's the werewolf's turn! I hate that woman. So most of you are probably wondering, if the first movie bombed, why did they make a sequel? Well, while Twilight might have failed as a movie, it succeeded as a very elaborate commercial for all the crappy Twilight merchandise. Merchandising! Where the real money from the movie is made. This started a devastating chain reaction, which led all the little tween girls that saw the movie to buy the shirts, pillows, books, and bring them home, where their moms read them, and then the housewives became fans, and so on and so on. Unfortunately, now Twilight had a strong fan base that warranted a sequel. All right, Legionnaires, this is it. Welcome to the second circle of hell, because this is New Moon. So our movie begins with a dream sequence, as our expressionless heroine, Deadpan McGee, leads Captain Whiny Pants through a field to meet her grandmother. But it turns out that it's not her grandmother, it's her reflection. Submitted for your approval, this movie sucks. As you may have guessed, Deadpan is terribly afraid that one day she'll be so old that the immortal Whiny won't want her anymore. Deadpan is Bane? What a fucking shock! So now Deadpan wants Whiny to change her into a vampire, but he refuses because, uh... You're my only reason to stay alive, if that's what I am. That night, the sparkly pricks gather to celebrate Deadpan's birthday, when she suddenly gets a paper cut on her finger, and suddenly Hansel over here starts acting like a vampire. But it's okay, Captain Whiny Pants is there to save the damn! Man, Syndrome is a better hero than you! Oh no, I'm a new superhero! I'm Syndrome! Later, Dr. Akula tends to Deadpan's wounds, and she again asks to be turned into a vampire. Imagine the situation in reverse. <laughs> Whiny blames himself for Deadpan's near-death experience, so Whiny does what he does best, whine about it and run away. Deadpan reacts by... not reacting. I'm gonna keep my face away from the camera, cause I don't know how to make a sad face. Deadpan tries to forget about Whiny by hanging out with Shark Boy, which ignites a lopsided low triangle in which the third member is always missing. Now I can't go any further without acknowledging the retarded trend that this plotline started, as the Twilight drones became divided on which one of Deadpan's love interests they preferred. They even started wearing t-shirts stating which team they were on. Stupid. Okay, if you must know, I'm on Team Grandpa. So apparently, the town of Forks is on high alert because the woods are being haunted by werewolves. The thing about werewolves is that they can look like people, so they could literally be anyone. Hi, Rod, hi! Oh, hi, Nerdlinger. I think the werewolves are those shirtless guys hanging out over there. Oh, you mean those guys over there, hanging out in the woods. 
alone, oh shirtless. Where have I seen this before? Body, body, wanna feel, wanna feel my body, baby. Oh, hey, Nerdlinger, by the way, what team are you on? I'm on Team Batley. So, yet again, like the movie that came before it, this movie flies by the 30 minute mark with zero conflict. Ugh, please, I'll take anything. Baby girl, you make me feel. Now, if you remember the first Twilight, Blondie Bear was killed by the Sparkly Prince. So now the rest of the Black Eyed Peas want revenge, and Will I Am is about to get himself a piece of. What? The werewolves are defending her? So it's going to be vampire versus werewolf? This movie's gonna have a classic monster match? Well, maybe I've been judging these movies too harshly. Wait, wait, why are you following her? Go back! Go back! Ah, fuck! Does anybody hear clucking? Ah! So Deadpan is faced with a dilemma. She can either be with the expressionless asshole who bailed on her at the first sign of trouble, or the reliable guy who will literally give her the shirt off his back. Her choice is obvious. The asshole. Did I mention that her middle name is Dumbass? Meanwhile, the local deputies search for werewolves and... Graham Green? Graham is such a great actor, why would they give him such a bit part? Actually, now that I think about it, it does make sense that they brought him along on the search. After all, his best friend dances with wolves. That, that sucked. The search goes on when Graham suddenly gets attacked by... <laughs> Okay, now it's going to be werewolf versus vampire. Ah, oh, fuck me! Coincidentally, Fergie dove off this cliff and into the precarious waters below at the exact same time as Deadpan. And why would Deadpan willingly jump off a cliff? Warning, the following explanation might just be the stupidest fucking thing you've ever heard. Hearing it might lower your intelligence by 3%, which is still 1% less than the effects of watching reality TV. Apparently, Deadpan can magically see Whiny every time that she's in danger, and she misses him so much that she purposely puts herself in dangerous situations so she can see him. That's retarded. Luckily, she's saved by Shark Boy, who- HOLY SHIT! Shark Boy's been hitting the roids! So unless you have brain damage, you probably figured out that Sharky is a werewolf. But when Deadpan first sees him morph, she's still surprised, in spite of the fact that she's seen him use his super strength, agility, and ability to track her down no matter where she's at. Like I said, brain damage. But my problem is that the movie doesn't even bother to explain how he suddenly became a werewolf. But I know of a legend. A legend that was passed on to me by my father and his father before him. A legend that goes like this. Every 400 years, a baby werewolf is born into the Fangsworth family. And so, when the moon shined on little Sherman Fangsworth, he changed into Fangface. Now, I have to admit, in spite of the fact that they morph into generic CG wolves, the werewolves in this movie are actually pretty cool. They work as a unit, and they're nowhere near as pretentious as the Sparkly Pricks. In fact, I can see no downside to deadpan dating Sharky. Oh being bled to death, or getting half your face ripped off. Man, I wonder what's gonna happen when my buddy Frank rolls into town in the fall. So you went from a vampire to a werewolf. Deadman, did you have a conversation with Willow today? You're a demon magnet. So now that Deadpan knows that Sharky is a werewolf, she wants to be with him, until she receives a visit from Whiny's sister. I'm sorry, I don't have a nickname for this character. Mira papi, I like to call her Vampirita. Mira mami, si tu quieres un poquito latino heat, you can buy it at Lover. Yeah, she's definitely easy on the eyes. Hey, a Lover, what team are you on? I'm on Team Antonio, bitch. Hmm, how about you, Fedora Freddy? I'm on Team Morrigan. Damn, papi, can I switch teams? No. So then Pan finds out from Whiny's sister that he knows about her relationship with Sharky. But instead of growing some balls and getting his woman back, he decides to commit suicide. Oh, it gets stupider. 
Instead of staking himself or cutting his own head off, he's going to violate vampire law by exposing that he is a vampire to a large crowd of humans, to which the penalty is death at the hands of the vampire tribunal. What the fuck are you out of your damn mind? So Deadpan goes to save Wani and, dude, seriously? And she saves him. But the tribunal still wants a word with them, so they send one of their subordinates to get them. And D D Dakota Fanning? But I'm like totally a vampire and shit. I like stickers and Justin Timberlake and like fighting people. tribunal leader, Mr. Prissy Puff, who looks fabulous. The tribunal declares Deadpan to know too much, and they agree to eat her. Wani finally straps his balls back on and gets his ass kicked. Could I see that again? Wani's sister saves her asses by using her miscellaneous vampire power to show them that in the future Deadpan will become a vampire. So they just let them go. Good for them. Later, the sparkly pricks argue about whether or not to turn deadpan. This isn't a life I would have chosen for myself. You know, it would probably help your case if you would explain the downside to being superpowered and mortal and rich. So they agree to turn her after high school graduation. So everything is hunky dory until. Short move! Finally, the romantic triangle is assembled and the three main players get to have their say. Unfortunately, the scene basically goes like this. Be with me. You're too dependable. I like emotionless jerk holes. What does he have that I don't? Hair gel. I think I'm going to cry now. Nah. Now that Sharky's out of the picture, Wiley reveals to Deadpan that he will turn her himself under one condition. Marry me, Bella. Oh, thank God! Wait a minute. Chris Waits? Golden Compass Chris Waits? Et tu, Chris? Consider this your second strike. Pray you don't have a third. Right here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Yes, I'm stuck in the middle with you. This movie's deviantly defiant dog doo doo. How does it measure up to the original? It's worse. I didn't think it was possible, but even less happens in this movie. There is zero conflict, as Deadpan and Fergie share less than a minute of screen time together. And why the hell are they both fighting over her? What's so great about this girl? I would rather date Dr. Acula. What? He's a doctor. A doctor, honey. But the joke is yet again on us, because this movie made more money than The Empire Strikes Back and The Incredibles. And it also holds the record for the highest first day gross, defeating the original champ, The Dark Knight. And I know, The Dark Knight still made more money, so I'm not gonna get mad. I'm gonna get even. Grim? That's for making me review the two Twilight movies back to back. Thanks, Grim. Now, if you excuse me, it's officially open season on all Sunheads. You know what? You're not worthy of my hand. Or any other weapon. Or any gimmicks. I'm gonna take you out with the two most lethal weapons I possess. I love being me. You know, Erod, there is a third Twilight move. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Sorry, Cryptic, Halloween's over. Well, there's always next year. Ah, oh, crap. Check out my website, suckers! <laughs>